everybody. This is Cindy Utter. Welcome to my artsy endeavors. Have fun. Hey guys, Cindy Utter here with my artsy endeavors. How are we doing? I am doing pretty well. Um, we're here to do another chapter in my story. Now, last video we talked about um, what you can and cannot do. And I found, this is the book that I've been reading to you guys out of. It's called You Are Stronger Than You Know, Words of Hope and Encouragement for Someone Living with Chronic Illness. It's a Blue Mountain Arts collection. Okay. Now, I found something in this book um, that I wanted to share with you. And this really pertains to the last chapter. But it's very interesting. So I'm going to read it to you. It's called What I've Learned. Learning to accept and live with limitations by a person who thought they didn't have any is difficult yet vital. I learned that everyone has something that stops them and you just have to circumvent these right now because one day, any day, everything stops, life stops. Understanding the fragility of my breath, I decided to inhale deep in gratitude. I learned how to have different ways of having joy. I can't walk on the beach, but I can dig in the sand. I can't run around the bases, but I can watch the games. I can't move very fast, but I can still think fast. I can't plant flowers, but I can smell them. So many things I can't do, yet so many things I can do. And best of all, I can love with no limitations, with all the passion I've ever had, and that's the most gratifying and meaningful music of all humanity. And this was written by Susan Paulus Schultz. Or Schultz. S-C-H-U-T-Z. This is huge. Remember last time we were talking about how I can't do anything, I can't do anything, I can't do anything, and to start looking at things you can do? This is perfect. Can't You can't go for a walk on the beach. You can't walk for a mile. That's all right. You can still your, sit your butt in the beach and dig in the sand. I love this. I love, I wish I'd have seen it when I was doing this chapter, but I didn't. But I've shared it with you now. So that's an awesome one. That was the last chapter. This chapter, we are going to talk about something that's very, very important to anybody. Whether it's someone that has a mental illness, someone that has a physical illness, someone that has no illness maybe they just they don't believe in themselves the topic for today is self-care it is so 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 important whether you're sick or you're not sick you're depressed or you're not depressed you're working or you're not working it doesn't matter self-care is just like your heartbeat it's essential for your health whether it be physical or mental okay um, what I found for this oh, that's chapter 13 where did it go I love this book by the way I read it quite often um, right here chapter 14 self-care I love this look at this watercolor isn't that beautiful awesome all right this is called make yourself a priority at any given moment on any given day, you are needed. Needed to talk, to drive, to sing, to dance, to laugh, to listen, to help, to walk, to do something. You say you'll make time for yourself when things slow down, but things will never slow down unless you allow them to. There will always be that something waving in the background, relentlessly trying to get your attention. It's up to you to turn your back, shut your eyes, walk in the opposite direction of that something that just refuses to give you a break. Take the time you deserve to check in with yourself and see what you need for a change. Be completely and utterly, no pun intended, <laughs> selfish. And do not let guilt creep, creep into your sacred space. No, it's not easy which is why you have to commit to making a conscious effort to concentrate solely on yourself and your needs. Say no. Turn off your phone. Lock your door to the world. 
Do whatever it takes to make yourself the ultimate priority. And this is written by Ellie Mastro. Now, self-care. Um, let's see what we've got. Let's get to our page. All right, this was last month. Cannot and can. Okay, the big differences. All right, self-care. We're going to work on this page right here. Rich is the next page. And I'm going to start off by getting some paint laid down. Now, when I say self-care, I mean exactly that. You have to learn how to take care of yourself. Um, let's use this. This is uh, I'm going to use dilution paints today. I have a couple stencils out. I have um, a stuck together rag. Ugh. Look what happens when you glue it. See when you glue your rags together? <laughs> That's why the rags. Isn't that pretty? Anyways, <laughs> I diverge. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to use dilution paints. I'm going to use maybe, maybe not. My girlfriend gave me this for Christmas one year. She goes, don't laugh, but I got you something. And you know what? It works every time. All right. So we've got dilutions. This is pure sunshine. I have fresh lime and I have vibrant turquoise. Same thing. And I always have problems getting these paint things open. I love the paint, love the colors. Ugh, not so fond of these jars. All right, so we are gonna put some paint down. Self-care, what does that mean? Self-care means you need to learn how to take care of yourself, right? That's exactly what it means. How do you take care of yourself? Um, I will be very honest. When, when I first had my accident and started learning all this wonderful, happy stuff about chronic pain, it was very difficult for me to find a reason to get up in the morning and take a shower. Why bother? I'm not going anywhere. These are my thoughts. Okay? I'm not going anywhere. Why should I have to get up and shower? It's no big deal. I'm just going to be sitting here all day at home. I'm going to be going from sitting, standing, and laying, my routine. You know, what's the big deal? And, you know, when you don't take care of yourself, even if you don't have chronic pain, I'm just going to talk about overall. If you don't take care of yourself overall, how do you feel? I'm not talking about, you know, my skin feels oily, my hair feels oily. I'm talking about how do you feel? I know when I don't have, when I don't take care of myself, it makes me feel, ugh. And I'm talking about just life, ugh. I'm not in the mood or nothing you know there's no happiness there's no it's just kind of like ugh, I just don't feel good I feel blicky right so when you um, have a chronic illness it's even more important to take care of yourself and the reason being is that you need that little pick-me-up you know how good feels it feels to take a nice hot shower. You need that. You need to have that pick me up on taking a shower and that pick me up of feeling clean and you know brushing your teeth and combing your hair and and putting your hair back in a ponytail if it's long enough, whatever. You need that. It's part of the essential emotions and it's part of the central need for your your psyche. Okay? to be able to understand that it's okay. I can still take care of myself. Now, does that mean it's going to be easy to get your butt in the shower every morning? Nope. Trust me, there's mornings when I get in the shower and my fibro hurts so bad, it is just excruciating to stand there under the water. But you know what? Toward the end of the shower, even though I'm still hurting, I feel my my mental my mental thoughts and my whole mental psyche I just feel so much better 
And when you have chronic pain, you have the tendency to um, have that mind thought of why bother. That, that mindset of why bother is doing you more harm than it is good. Now I hear everybody saying, oh yeah, but I can't get in the shower, I can't do this, I can't, I can't comb my hair, I can't brush my hair. What did we talk about last week? Yes, you can. You can do it. You just have to learn a different way. Maybe you're not able to um, blow dry your hair like you used to, okay? Because it's hard to hold up the hair dryer. Or, you know, your shoulder doesn't allow you to do that. Or your your body, you, you can't bend down to get your hair dryer out of the cupboard. Okay? So what do you do? You learn different ways. You learn that, okay, well, I can't, I can't blow dry my hair. So you know what? I'm just going to put a little gel in it and let it be curly today. Right? So there are ways of doing things, which we talked about last week. There are cans. Get rid of those cans. You know, can I can sit here and say, okay, let me give you an example. Um, I'm talking about cans again, but then we'll go back to self-care. I can't ride a motorcycle. That's wrong. I can still drive a motorcycle. However, I'm going to have to have one that has three wheels and a lot of really, 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 really comfy uh, suspension or... I won't be able to drive okay so it's not a can and a can't it's a you know it's a what can I do how am I gonna adapt it well the same thing with your self-care your self-care you need to learn um, that a, a way to make yourself feel better emotionally physically mentally however you want to look at it all right you can take care of yourself now let me give you some, I just dotted that on my paint, paint, bleh, paint palette. I kind of like that. Just cleaned it off my paint palette. Um, let's talk about how. You're like, how, I can, how, how can I take care of myself? You can do it. I know you can. It takes strength. It takes, um, per, you, you, it takes willpower. You have to will yourself to get up in the morning, hop in the shower, put on clean clothes, brush your teeth. You know, what would you what would you tell a friend? If a friend, you know, you can do it. You're, you're going to stand on the sideline for that friend and say, come on, come on, you can do this. You can do this. Come on, let's do it. Right? All right. So there's other ways of self-care other than taking a shower. Or saying you can't. Now, I printed out this picture of me. This is one thing that I have to do for self-care. When there is sun out, I have to go outside. This is for my mental psyche as well as my um, physical. I need sun. Alright, so there's this is just a party picture of me. <laughs> now... There's other ways to do it too. As you guys know, all know, I have purple hair. And let me tell you, purple hair doesn't just come by itself. You have to do something crazy like this. Don't ask me why I have a picture of me in foil. I think I sent it to somebody one day. Um, so when I need a little bit of self-pampering, self-care, this is what I do. I get my hair done, and trust me, I don't do it every six weeks or eight weeks or whatever. I do it when I feel I need to have a fresh up for myself. All right. So what will I do? I will go get my hair done. These are actually ma nails. I will go get my nails done. Now, you don't even have to go out of your house to do this to make yourself feel better. Go to the dollar store, buy a dollar thing of, of um, nail polish, and sit down one morning and do your nails. You don't have to go to a salon for that. They aren't that difficult. We've all painted nails before, at least all the females have. I don't know, maybe some of you guys out there may have too. I don't know. Okay, but you can do this. 
Another thing I do is I go, this is something I like to do and I like to go to a salon to have done, and that is a pedicure. Um, just a little um, tidbit. Since I had my um, injury, my right foot takes 90% of my weight. Um, because it's very difficult for me to put weight on my left foot due to the nerve damage. So, um, it's, it's kind of, it's hard to get a pedicure done because I have to tell them they can't really massage this foot. They really can't touch it a whole lot. <laughs> so it's kind of difficult, but I go because I enjoy it. I enjoy sitting there relaxing, feeling like I'm being pampered. It's just so much fun, right? Let me see. Let's do this. No, I don't like that. I'm trying to figure out how I want to put these on the paper. Um, let's do this. All right, so we have our toes and our nails. Let me just take one nail. Do, 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 do. So how are you going to take care of yourself? What can you do? Another part of self-care is journaling. I am in my journal pretty much constantly and the reason being is because it's a place where I can go and I can mentally dump whatever I need to dump and it, it makes my life, uh, my mind, my soul, my body feel so much better to get the toxic thoughts and um, you know, thoughts out of my head. It, it, it makes my life and my body feel so much better because instead of beating myself up constantly in my head, um, which I can do, there's days I do that quite well, um, I put it in a journal and when it's in that journal and when it's out of my head, it's in a much better place because then I can let it go. All right. So I feel part of self-care is journaling. I feel part of self-care is your physical cleanness, cleanliness. That's part of self-care. Okay, these paints are still a little bit wet, but I'm still going to keep going on this because I like it. Um, let's see, what else is self-care? Eating right. How many of us have sat down with a box of cookies or um, a thing of ice cream and said, you know what? The hell with it I'm gonna eat it right how many of us lots of us raise your hand everybody raise your hand because that's what happens um, that is not self-care self-care is thinking about what you're gonna put into your body and um, realizing that what you put in your body is what your body's gonna give out so in other words you put junk in your body's gonna give junk out that's kind of the way I look at it so when I'm eating a toss salad at night for dinner, um, I'm thinking about, okay, I'm giving my body some good, clean vegetables, lettuce and carrots and cucumbers. And you know what? And that should make me feel better in the morning. Well, it, well, not even in the morning. It makes you feel better overall because you're, you're taking care as to what you're putting into your body. And that's a good thing, right? I'm going to put this up here maybe. Yeah, we're going to put this up here because I want a journal down there. So let's put this right about here. <laughs> it's a funny picture of me. I have a laugh when I see it. So eating physical. Trust me when I say I know it's hard to do the movements. But I can tell you when, in, when there are days when I just want to stay in bed and not move because I hurt so bad. And I make myself get up, and I make myself get in the shower. I make myself come into my art room and sit down and do some art. I'm still hurting. I take the painkillers, because that's what I got to do. But you know what? In the end, overall, I feel so much... Get off me. I feel so much better about myself for doing that. That... You, you need to continue to make yourself feel good. 
All right, give me a second here. I want to grab some washi. Oops, I got some paint on me. No big deal. I hope this makes sense to you guys because um, it's. It, this is how I have found how I can uh, take care of myself yet, you know, still live. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. Um, but I just want you to know that self-care is really, really important. You, you need to have that care for, for both mentally and physically. Isn't that pretty? And that was just leftover paint. Um, so please, please, please take care of yourself. Sit and journal. Eat good food. Um, let me see what I can find. Let's do a yellow. You know, it, it, take care of your body. It may be, you know, uh, yelling at you and saying, ha, ha, ha. I don't care, but you still have to take care of that body and you have to take care of your mental. Um, if it helps to go talk to somebody, go talk to somebody. I'm not shy about it. I'll, I will tell you right out. Not too long after I had my accident, first thing I did was call the counselor and said, I need to talk because I felt like my entire self-worth, my entire meaning of my life was just taken from me. And this was before I knew it was permanent. I was having so much difficulty just accepting the fact, A, I was in so much pain, B, that, you know, I had to deal with workers' comp to get anything done about it. So call the counselor, talk to them. It, there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's all good. I'll be honest with you, from my childhood, I've been in counseling for many, many years. Not anymore. I've pretty much learned to accept that as well. Um, but, you know, it's okay. It's okay to talk to a professional and, you know, let them know what you're feeling. You guys see this? I'm just playing with washi right now. Because <laughs> I can. And it's so funny, i got to tell you guys, this is just kind of off subject, but um, my washi used to sit behind me in a, it's, I got one of the big three drawer things, and it's full of washi, used to sit behind me. Well, here not too long ago, I made a change in my art room, and I brought some different art supplies up onto my desk, and I have to tell you, I've used them more since they've come up here than I ever used them with them sitting behind me. Isn't that funny? But anyways... All right, so we're going to do self-care. So I want to just do some doodles on this while I'm talking. Jobbering. I'm not being fancy. I'm just kind of doodling here and there. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to write on here. And again, this with me doing this, this um, My Story series, just so you guys know, this is helping me as well as I hope I'm helping you. Because I'm telling you from my experience what I have learned and what I know to be true in my own experience. Okay? So, um, you know, there may be part of this that, that doesn't work for you. And I understand that. I get that. But the only thing I'm trying to say is to try. Try to... Take better care of yourself. Try to understand your chronic pain or your mental illness. And by understanding it, I mean get to know it. Understand what the limitations are. Understand what your expectations are of your own body. Um, learn how to deal with those limitations and with those expectations. And when things don't go the way you want them to, know that it's okay. Um, Sunday, just for an example, I was supposed to go to a graduation barbecue. Well, I woke up Sunday morning in a full flare. Now, here's what I could do. I could suck it up, go to the barbecue. People give me hugs, causes more pain, right? I could go, enjoy myself a little, maybe. Or I could stay home and take care of myself. So I contacted my friend. I said, I'm really, really sorry. I can't make it. This is why. She says, I get it. I totally understand. 
she sent me home a bunch of barbecue food. I mean, that's the type of friends that you need out there. Those are the friends that you need to go to when you're having issues and um, have that type of a support around you. All right, so for self-care is... Hang on a second. Taking care of myself. Both physically. And mentally. And how do I do this? By journaling. Bathing. Um... I'm going to say pampering, eating right, enjoying the sun, what else? I'm going to put bathing and dressing. Now, for a long time, just to give you an idea, um, another idea, for a long time, once my, I had figured out what was going on, I didn't wear any jewelry. I didn't wear my bracelets. I didn't wear my necklaces. I didn't wear my earrings. None of it. Huh, that's got paint on it. Imagine that. <laughs> um, and it was, it was because I didn't care. I was very depressed. I didn't care what happened how it happened, who it happened to. I, I just was not not a happy camper in any way, shape, or form. So when we talk about self-care, it's even about, you know, how you take care of your own body. And, you know, it's part of your mental status. It's part of, you know, I'm going to get up in the morning and face the day and put on some jewelry and look good. And, you know, I may have yoga pants on, but I feel good because I took that little extra time to take a shower, to comb my hair, to, you know, put on a nice shirt. I mean, a nice t-shirt or a tank top, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just make sure it's nice. It's clean. You're not living in your same clothes day after day after day because that's just not good for you. Um, you know, self-care is, again, making sure you eat right. I have, I'll be honest, I'll be the first one to tell you, I cannot get up in the morning and put food in my mouth. It's, to me, it's disgusting. It makes me sick. So, yeah, it's probably 11, 11.30 right now, but you know what? It's time for my breakfast. So I'm going to go and make myself something decent to eat and, you know, take care of myself. All right? So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, I hope you've learned a little bit from it. Like I said, self-care is... is all about you. You need to take care of yourself mentally, physically, and emotional. Or I'm sorry, um, emotionally as well. Okay. Don't forget, you're gonna treat. Whoops, you're gonna treat yourself. I just put blue down. <laughs> don't touch your dots after you put them on because they streak. I don't care. It's all good. Um, you know, take care of yourself. Take care of you, and you're going to find out that you feel so much better. All right? All right, guys. Let me know if you need to chat. Any comments below? I am not a licensed therapist. I am telling you specifically, and everything I say is from my own experience, nobody else's. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please put them in the notes below. And as always, I hope you guys take care of yourself and have a great day. Have fun. That's what life's all about. Happy creating, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video. As always, hit like, share, comment. I'll answer any of the comments that you have or questions. Um, and as always, be kind, have fun. That's what life's all about. And happy creating. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.